Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to the Story Time Family. How are you keeping? Are you enjoying lots of family time at home? I bet you have lots of time to read. I hope you had some sunshine today. I had some sunshine in the yard today. Feels awesome. Well, today I have this book called *The Fog* by Keo McClare and Kenneth Park. Shall we have a look and check out what this book is about? Let's go. The fog. Far north on a wild sea was an island covered with ice. People came from around the world to visit this special place. Most of the birds living on the island paid little attention to these visitors, but there was one bird, a small yellow warbler, who did pay attention. Welcome to icy land. Oh, it must be so so cold there. Warble was a devoted human watcher. There was always a new human for him to watch. Nothing else wobbled that make him happier. Number six hundred and seventy-one, a beheaded, bibliophilic female. Number six hundred and seventy-two, a bald-headed, glitzy male. But one spring day, something happened to interrupt his happiness. What could it be? That day, a warm fog rolled in from the sea. All morning long, it whisked and swirled, climbing hills and spilling into valleys. By lunchtime, the brightness of morning had faded to a silvery blue. By dinner time, the fog had turned everything ghostly. For days, Wobble sat high in his tree, and waited for a strong gust of wind to come lift the fog. He waited, and waited. Being a handy warbler, he tried to chase it away. But no matter what he did, the fog came back. Warble invited his neighbors over to discuss the situation. It's just a little fog. I wouldn't even call it fog. Mist, maybe. Ether, perhaps. Fog? No. The fog has come. Sometimes these things happen. Let us be humble and accept it. I like what it does to my feathers. Only the ducks seem to care. The next morning, a new sign appeared. The renaming of the island had a curious effect. Many of the birds began to forget that there ever was a time before the fog. But Warble did not forget, and he has started to notice other changes too. Here's looking at you, kid. He went to tell the others what he had seen, but they were too busy. How to brighten your home with a thousand watt nest lights? Even the ducks had moved on and didn't want to talk about it. The fog continued to spread. Warble still waited in his tree, hoping to spot a human, but there were no more sightings. So he put away his books and tried his best to ignore the fog, until even he began to wonder if things had ever been any different. Foggy mountain boys playing, but then one foggy morning, Warble spotted a colorful speck. In the distance, is it a human? Peering closely, he saw a dark-haired human, ghosting through the meadow. 
It was a rare female species, and she was singing a song. Number 673, a red hooded spectacle female, Juvenile. She looked a bit lost. Hmm. Huh. They're, they're both just as curious about each other. Happy to see a human again, Warble offered her insects to eat. She liked them. The human, in return, offered Warble gifts and showed him how to fold intricate paper things. And there they stayed, eating insects and folding paper and speaking in every way except with words. Until Warble made a surprising discovery. Chup, chup. I'm listening. Chup. Really? Chup, chup. Hmm. The human also saw the fog. Warble asked the human if she thought there were others who saw the fog too. She was unsure. How could they find out? That's when she had an idea. She opened her backpack and set to work. The human had made a paper boat and floated it out to sea. They waited for a reply, but none arrived. So they launched more boats, and again they waited. Finally, they had an answer. It was a note from a walrus in eastern Canada. Yes, I see the fog, he says. Another note came from a moss ox in Norway. Yes, and we want to fix it. Another came from some cats in England. Yes, we see it. Are you a bird? Can we eat you? Notes arrived from around the world. With each one, the fog began to lift a little, and the wind began to blow again until the world grew a little less ghostly and became easier to notice things. Big things and tiny things, shiny red things and soft feathery things. And slowly, slowly, the beautiful island brightened and Warble and the human found time to rest under the stars, which they could now see. The moon drifted in the sky and they began to sing. They sang to each other and to the moon and because they were happy to be together, sharing the clear night view. Wasn't that a beautiful, beautiful story? So appropriate for what we're going through right now. Remember, we are in this together and we can all come out together too. Stay strong, keep safe, take care of your family and yourself. If you like a copy of this beautiful book, the links are in the description below. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe and leave us a comment. Tell us about your experience at home and how you are keeping safe and keeping things fun at home. Click on the bell for more stories like this. Read lots of books and we'll see you back here soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.